Hello, hello, and welcome back to TalkStream, the live streaming show brought to you by Alta Talks Academy, where we bring you the voice of experts on toxicology and on new approach methodologies. Uh, my name is Matteo. I'm the host of TalkStream, and I'm very happy to be here. Uh, I hope you are also having a wonderful evening. Um, this is our third episode, I believe, of the second season. Uh, so we already have a few prepared. So it's very nice that we managed to put together all these. And I thank you very much for, for tuning and, and joining us tonight. Um, if you're not familiar with, uh, with TalkStream, you're not familiar with Alter Talks, I'll just give you the general uh, gist of it. Um, Alter Talks, we are a company based in Brussels. Uh, we are focused on promoting and disseminating alternatives to animal testing in toxicology. That's what we do. Uh, and we do it in very different ways. Uh, we do communication, we do dissemination, we do education. We have a lot of different activities related to that. And TalkStream is just one of it. And uh, if, if you want to know more, if you are interested in knowing a little bit more about what we are doing, uh, I would suggest you to check our website that you can see now on screen, uh, which is altatalks.academy.be. Uh, and there you can find all our activities, all our information, our contacts as well. If you want to reach out, we are always uh, happy to meet new people. Um, and that's it for Alta Talks. Uh, if, if you are new to TalkStream as well, uh, well, as I said, this is our live streaming show. What we do here is trying to bring you the voices of experts, of people that have something to say uh, on this very, very complicated world of toxicology and alternative methods. And we give you the chance to interact with them as well. Uh, uh, because since you're following us, either on LinkedIn, YouTube, or Twitch, I believe, uh, you can write on the chat uh, any question you have, any comments, any suggestion, whatever comes to mind. And I'll, I'll make sure to pay attention to it and try to bring it to the attention of our guest as well. And I forgot to put the logo of our of TalkStream. I, I will be able to make a, a smooth transition once uh, from the intro to, to my presentation, but that's not today, apparently. Um, but yes, so that's the gist of, of, uh, of TalkStream, and we're going to be here for one hour. Uh, and so if you have something to say or a question you have, just write it in the chat. I'll make sure to follow it up. Uh, but today, uh, we focus on, uh, on a new theme, uh, a new topic that we didn't approach so far. And actually, we're going to develop it a little bit in this episode and in the next one. Uh, because today we start to talk about uh, European-funded projects. Uh, and today, specifically, we start to talk about a project called Ontox, um, which is very cool. Uh, and together with the other project we will encounter, they try to achieve some very massive results in the world of toxicology. Um, if you're not familiar or very familiar with the concept of European-funded project in general, uh, well, the idea is that these projects are a tool that is used by the European uh, Commission, the European institution in general, to try to create some changes and solve some of the challenges that we all have to face uh, nowadays. Uh, for example, one of the ambitious goals of the European Commission is to uh, reach the so-called toxic-free environment at some point in the near future, uh, and to make something like that, to reach actually uh, uh, an objective like this one, the, the institutions, they found project and they found it through different type of programs. Uh, one of the last one was called uh, Horizon 2020 Research and Innovation Program, which put together around 80 billion of euros, so quite a massive fund, uh, who was trying to finance all different sort of uh, innovative projects to, to solve some of the issues that we are facing. Uh, and it's, it's difficult to explain exactly how different uh, and how big these projects are because they are really massive compared to the project that you might have in mind usually. And I think this, this, this image is one of the best way that I can have to try to give you an idea of why this, this looks super cool working in, in an European project because they are really massive in scope in, in the resources and the amount of people that are working on it. And they really also try to reach and to achieve some really practical uh, goals. Um, the, since they are such a big project, of course, they are not managed by one single institution at a time. Usually it's a collection of institution. Uh, it's called consortium most of the time. And in the case of Antox, for example, is around uh, 18 partners that are all gathering together and trying to achieve this super massive project all together. And you see that they are scattered pretty much around all Europe. Uh, and in this case, there is also someone uh, in the US. So they are really 
massive also in terms of all the organization which are both private and public put together. Um, going a little bit more specific into what Ontox is doing and is trying to do, uh, well, that's like the subtitles, I would say, that I'm going to read because I've never been able to remind, to remember by myself these. Uh, basically, the Ontox project is trying to create ontology-driven and artificial intelligence-based repeated dose toxicity testing of chemicals for next generation risk assessment, which, yes, it does sound complicated. At least it does sound very complicated to me. Um, but don't worry, we are going to try in the next hours to try to understand a little bit better what does it mean. Uh, I just wanted to focus you a little bit on a few parts of this of this text, uh, especially the repeated dose toxicity, which is one of the main focus of this project. And, and why this is super cool, I will, we will explore it a bit better uh, in the episode. But the reason why this is cool is, but, is because uh, right now to study repeated dose toxicity, which is basically the fact that some of us might be exposed to the same substance for a long time, maybe throughout our entire life, kind of every day. Think about it, for example, in your workplace. For this specific sort of testing, we don't have right now uh, alternatives to classical methods to try to understand and test if a chemical is good or not in this specific situation, which means that we rely a lot on animals for do this kind of testing, which we know have a lot of uh, issues, a lot of shortcomings. And, and of course, we all are trying to find better ways, uh, because otherwise we will not be able to test all the chemicals that we have around. And Ontox is actually practically trying to do this. So it's really trying to develop the so-called NAMS, so-called new approach methodologies uh, that are focused on uh, repeated dose toxicity. And then they will focus on these three different organs, the brain, the liver, and the kidneys. Maybe we'll try to understand why this one. Uh, and they, will, they are trying to develop a few of these NAMs and uh, as a sort of some concept and then maybe see if something else can be created. So as you can see, it's really a practical application of a problem that we have right now in our society. So for all these reasons and for many others that we will discuss a little bit more during the episode, today we're going to try to give a closer look to OnTox project, uh, how it works, what these people are trying to achieve and, and how they are trying to achieve. And again, as usual, you have the possibility to ask to our guest all the time any questions you might have. So don't hesitate to write it in the in the chat, on the comments, and I will I will keep a close eye to the to the comment section. Uh, and always, I I won't be the one doing most of the talk uh, because I know almost nothing about it. Uh, but we have a, a lot of experts this time. We have four different guests for you uh, that I'm sure will be able to give you all the ins and outs of this project. Uh, so without further ado, I'm very happy to introduce you the expert and it's time for you to meet them. Hello, everyone. Hi, Matteo. Hello. Hello, hello. Hi. I'll, I'll try to present you one, one at a time so it's easier because, oh God, I never had so many people on the show at, at once. Uh, it might be difficult to manage. Uh, but yeah, first of all, welcome. Thank you very much for me here. Uh, I, I'll go the way in which I see you in, in my screen. Eh? So that's that's how I'm going to go. I'm not going to make any favorites. Uh, so I'll, I'll start with Anouk, uh, which uh, Anouk Verhoeven, if I believe that your sermon is pronunciated like that, or something that sounds kind of like that. Uh, so you are a PhD student in Matthias Winkers lab. Uh, you are the master in pharmacy and drug development, I believe, from the KU Leuven. At least that's what yeah. I brought in my notes. Um, welcome. How are you? Good, good. I'm good. I'm uh, glad to be here and uh, do this live interview. <laughs> thank, thank you for accepting the invitation. Uh, then we have Yan Yang, I believe. Well, I, yeah. again, names are very diff difficult for me, sorry. Uh, postdoc in Matthias Winkens lab. So she did a PhD in the Master University in Toxicogenomics, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, welcome as well. Thank you. Uh, then, oh God, I didn't ask you your surname, Jonas van Ertvelde, I guess? Yes, yes, you pronounce it almost right. Uh, almost <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, also PhD student in Matthias Lab, also pharmacy and drug development, if I'm if I not mistaken, but it's time in Antwerp. Great, welcome. Yeah, thank you. Glad to be here. Uh, and then finally, uh, we have Mathieu Winken, a professor at the VUB. Uh, university here in Brussels, coordinator of the Ontox project, so probably the person that knows the most about it, uh, and a lot of experience in in vitro toxicology 
and especially in liver toxicology. So welcome as well. Thank you very much. And thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to present. And actually, you made our life pretty easy because I heard in the introduction that you gave already a good introduction on Ontox. So there's nothing to say for us anymore. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. I, I have a lot of questions for you. Don't worry. <laughs> and I'm sure that I forgot so many different details <laughs> uh, that are important for the project. For example, I forgot to put this panel. Uh, but OK. Um, so. Let's, I always start in this way with the guests. I start with a question that had nothing to, to, to do with the topic, so we can all get in the mood, uh, which is always, how, how did you end up doing this? Why all of you, in a way or in another, ended up working on toxicology in general and not, I don't know, you didn't become an astronaut or, or, or a baker or, or anything else uh, in your life. Uh, so I will, again, I make the same round as before. Start with Anouk and, and then we do the round. Why, why toxicology? Uh, well, I did my master internship at a lab that was also focusing on uh, in vitro toxicology. And there I became quite fascinated about working with cells and then doing different in vitro assays to assess the, the pathways that are involved in um, toxicity testing. So when I went doing that, I, I really realized that this is what I want to do further in my, my further career. So uh, here I am now, uh, I guess. Great, cool. I, I had no idea what I was doing when I was your age and I was on my PhD, so uh, it seems you, you had a good start. Uh, okay, so Young. Okay, so I've always had an ambition to improve people's health and the quality of life. So I attended medical school uh, and majored in public health. And toxicology, uh, it has a nickname uh, as a uh, like uh, science of safety. So it studies uh, the like adverse uh, effects of drug administration or chemical pollutant exposure, etc. So like to me, it sounds like a 100% match to my goal of life. So that's my choice. Great. Uh, you, you also seem to end up in the best place ever. I'm going to move this banner because otherwise I don't see half of your face. Uh, Jonas? Yeah, uh, indeed, as you said, Matteo, I also didn't really know what to do uh, at the master <laughs> level. But I feel bad. Uh, yeah, I was doing my master thesis also in completely something else. But I knew at that time, uh, yeah, the thesis was really research focused. I wanted to go, uh, I wanted to do a PhD. And so I searched for vacancies. And because I'm a pharmacist, we have a big background in toxicology. And yeah, I was looking for toxicology PhDs because I really like the topic big cliche of course <laughs> but uh, yeah that's when i found uh, matthias application and uh, yeah uh, it was to start a phd project in uh, in vitro toxicology and i got the opportunity to join the the ontox project and if you yeah get uh, an opportunity to join such a large project with uh, yeah so many ambition uh, yeah how could i say no <laughs> and also with so many partners involved it looked uh, really interesting uh, to me so yeah that's why i'm here <laughs> yeah i understand of course yeah and last but not least for matthew i mean i guess the answer might be a little bit longer but <laughs> well it goes also back a bit uh, further of course because correct me if i'm wrong but i think i'm the oldest here but anyhow so it i think i need to agree with well i agree that's to say i'm a bit on the same league as as matthew and jonas in the sense that I also had no clue what I actually wanted to do, especially at the age of 18 when I had to go to the university. I especially knew at that time what I didn't want to do, and that was things like mathematics and so on. So for some reason, I don't know why, I started to do pharmaceutical sciences. I actually was doubting between medical sciences, pharmaceutical sciences, and bioengineering. I can't even remember why I actually chose for uh, pharmaceutical sciences. But I turned out to be pretty good at it at the first year, after the first year. But I soon realized that I wouldn't be the kind of pharmacist that would end up in, a, you know, in a pharmacy, basically. I was particularly interested into the research aspects because in the pharmaceutical education, you also have a very, you know, strong focus on research. And in the fourth year, we got the toxicology subject, and I really was intrigued by that. And uh, I ended up doing my master thesis at the Department of Toxicology, which at that time was headed by uh, Professor Vera Rohis. 
uh, with like a big name in the toxicology field. And uh, well, I actually, before I knew I signed up for doing a PhD, just like <laughs> Anouk and Jonas actually are doing now. I was in their shoes many years ago. Uh, so I started to do a PhD at the VUB in toxicology, and we are specializing in vitro toxicology. So that means toxicology without using animals. And along the way, I really got, you know, much more interested in that. And I really got the privilege at that time to be grown up, so to say, also in this environment of European projects. Um, and I really liked this because it really helps you to set a network and to really make an impact. So it's not only within our university, but you really team up with teams all over the world, basically, of course, mainly in Europe. And the nice thing about this, it's not only an academic exercise, it's also a very intersectoral exercise in the sense that you also collaborate with industry, with regulators. And a couple of years ago, um, well, I was ambitious like I always am. And there was a big European project call for, you know, these kind of projects. And, well, I wondered, why couldn't I make a chance? I was still considered a bit young. I'm 44 years old. And in terms of European coordinatorship, that is considered quite young. Uh, but, you know, I thought maybe I should, you know, try it. And uh, well, it got granted. And this is where I ended up today. So uh, all of a sudden, I coordinate a project with 19 uh, partners and uh, we could also increase our own team at the VOB, which is also very nice of course and this is where I am today a, lo a, lo a long route is indeed but it's, it's very nice to, to, to follow indeed uh, all, all the path uh, and, and I'm looking forward to what all the others that are younger will, will end up doing in the future indeed uh, and indeed speaking about age I just realized I don't know if you did understood or, or, or you can relate to the meme that I was showing during my presentation I'm not sure if you guys see Dragon Ball anymore. Do I feel, do I have to feel old? Do I have to feel too young? I don't know. Maybe something <laughs> you, you can relate to. Maybe it's better if you don't ask, if you don't apply. <laughs> um, I just wanted to to make you part of, of of a little thing that is happening on the chat. Apparently, we have a lot of fans for Jonas, uh, and I, I just want to point out that for now we have already two supporters of Jonas. I don't know if all the others are gonna be able to keep it up. Uh, uh, but it's, it's a nice thing to say. Uh, I'm happy that there is also some some activity there. Um, okay, so I have a general idea of, of what did you do before and why you ended up doing this. Uh, and to transition to, to on talks, Matteo, you started to apply maybe a little bit on that. Uh, I'd like to understand uh, how the project came to be. Before we jump into the project itself, uh, how did you, this, the, the idea of working, the develop, developing these new NAMs, working on the rapid dose toxicity, how was the process? It was difficult to, came, to, to convince people to, to work together, to get the money and everything. Well, first of all, I think there was a very urgent need for these kind of projects and this kind of research. Um, I don't know to what extent I need to elaborate on the context here, but you know that there is a legislation that actually is becoming more strict in the sense that, for instance, for cosmetics, we are no longer allowed to use animals for safety testing. And also in other types of legislations, these NAMs and alternative uh, methods, well, they find uh, more and more their way, way towards that. And of course, in addition to these kind of legislative changes, there is also the ethical change. I mean, a lot of people start to realize that, you know, we do sacrifice a lot of animals and uh, what you also need to know, of course, is that from the scientific perspective, it doesn't make really sense to use animals for, uh, you know, scientific research, because we always assume that what we see in an animal will be the same in a human being. But that's that's absolutely not the case. So there were many, many, many reasons, actually, to start this kind of project. And the European Commission is plays actually a key role, I would say, also at a global level. So we always have been very strong in Europe in the development of alternative methods. And the European Commission also has invested a lot of money into this. And in that respect, we already had a lot of, you know, big uh, European projects that were fully focused on this. And back in 2019, there was this huge call that was published. Uh, it was a 60 million euro call. And it was said that uh, you could apply for project proposals ranging between 10 and 20 million. So on average, you know, five to three project proposals would get granted. And of course, this is not really 
let's say, um, a big world in the sense that the toxicology niche, especially in Europe, the in vitro toxicology niche is quite, you know, limited, I would say, but nevertheless, broad enough to have a lot of competitors. Mm -hmm. So in terms of who, who uh, I actually invited to become, you know, part of the consortium, that was, well, that was decided quite quickly, because as I mentioned previously, I had the privilege to already build mm -hmm. a European network. So I knew very well at that time who are the important key players. I mean, in academic settings, also in industry. So we knew also, of course, with the help of a lot of people, I certainly did not do this all alone. We came up quite quickly with the consortium. So a group of people of which, you know, like this is the critical mass. This is the people that you need to have in order to, you know, build this consortium and to really make impact. So that was how I came to build the consortium. Of course, linked to this was building the idea, the concept. Mm -hmm. And this is something that, of course, was not you know, made up overnight. This already grew in my mind and also in the mind of other peoples for many, many, many years. And actually, it builds on the most recent developments in many uh, research fields. Uh, a very important one, of course, is computer science. And I refer to artificial intelligence. You very nicely explained the title, the very long title of Ontox, <laughs> and you have seen that artificial intelligence is uh, already in the title, which emphasizes how important that is. So that's the ni nice part about Ontox. So it really joins different disciplines, people from very, very, you know, you know, uh, different kind of areas, computer science, uh, cell biology, and these uh, kind of, of, of disciplines. And uh, this is how we came to, to work together. So we first had an idea and then we linked people to that. And this is how uh, Ontox was conceived, basically. It took us, let's say, uh, between, if I remember correctly, three and six months to write everything down. And that seems long, but that's nothing compared to the process that, you know, uh, was before that. And that mm -hmm. was really, you know, like conceiving the idea, developing the idea. And that's, that's the hard work. The writing mm -hmm. parts, although it was also quite a few months, um, that's limited compared to the actual, you know, rational and the development of the project as such. And we were lucky. There were 23 proposals that were submitted and only three got granted. Oh, and wow. we were among those. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so there is Ontox. There is also another project called Precision Tox, and there is a Risk Hunter. And since the start of these projects, because we all started around the same time, the European Commission also has asked us to form a cluster. So a group of these three consortia. And the idea is, is uh, to make even more impact. So we collaborate scientifically, but also we try to collaborate in terms of you know, increasing our visibility and impact, because what we want to avoid by all means is that all these projects typically you know, run over five years. Mm -hmm. is that in five years, actually within three and a half years, because we are already, uh, you know, ongoing since 18 months, that the project stops and that it kind of evaporates. So yeah. we really want to create a legacy and we really want to, you know, make an impact. And that is one of the reasons why we team up with these other projects, because, yeah, if you join forces, you're much stronger. Mm -hmm. and that was a very long answer to your question. <laughs> no, but they, I mean, you, you you paint everything. I think it's a great background. You also managed to plug to, to plug a few other ideas of the fact that you know these EU projects are not bubbles. They are Absolutely really not. trying to put together the the best of of what we the, the, there is to offer around and and yeah. it's one of the beauty and the the, the strong point. Uh, and I think you kind of replied also to the question of of Harun who was asking if how EU and other countries are feeling about the use of alternative animal testing, uh, putting together in vitro, in silico, uh, for example, artificial I, I know that in the case of skin, skin sensitization is already well used already, the alternatives. Uh, so you you already show that indeed it's it's an European effort. It's a country level effort, well, continent level effort to, to actually reach yeah. this, this sort of... of uh, here, I really must say I'm proud to be um, a European citizen because Europe really, you know, is in a pool position. So we mm -hmm. really have set an example for the rest of the world. And I think the best example of the best proof of this is the animal testing ban for cosmetics, which was introduced several years ago. Actually, it went gradually, but the full ban uh, became valid in 2013. There are already more than, what is it, 40 countries around the world that have followed that example. 
-hmm. So that really shows that, you know, we set an example here. And I hope this partly gives an answer to the question that was asked here. It not only relates to, you know, cosmetics, it's also for other types of chemicals where we really set an example and where other people follow us. The proof of this probably also is that we have U.S. partners in, uh, mm -hmm. in, in Ontox and that also the regulatory agencies of U.S., but also from other continents are really looking at us to see what the recent develop, uh, developments are and how they can implement what we actually do here also within their country. And I think this is something that we can really be proud of. Yeah, no, definitely. It's, it is indeed something that maybe is not said enough. Um, okay, so thank you. Now, I try to jump a little bit more into the project itself. At the beginning, I was saying that you are really trying to develop new NAMs, which is amazing because finally someone is actually doing it practically. Uh, and I can ask, what does it mean? Um, you're doing six of them. Uh, so I'm assuming you have a favorite one. <laughs> I don't know if you do. So I'm going to start to ask, uh, this time from Yona, so I'll do the other way around. Uh, right. if, if you have one, or maybe one organ, I'm assuming you are working on liver. Yeah, of course, I'm going to choose one. my own num. <laughs> How could I not? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a num I also know the most of. It's uh, cholestasis, of course. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I like the one in the which you're working more. Yeah, it's the one I'm working on. Uh, another favorite num, uh, I would say. Yeah, the, the brain. I actually don't know a lot about brain toxicology and I would want to know more maybe in the future. <laughs> I'm going to put it quickly on, on, on the screen so people can see it. Uh, maybe Young, do you have one that like, I really like this one. I really love to work on this one. Yeah, definitely liver. Liver <laughs> <laughs> for like, yeah, also a very long time. Uh, liver is uh, the largest cellular internal organ in our body, and it's also the like major site of drug uh, detoxification and metabolism. So, yeah, due to this function, uh, they are also uh, liver is really also prone to the injuries caused by drugs or chemicals. Mm -hmm. So, I've been working uh, with liver during my masters and PhDs. So, I'm gonna keep working on that. <laughs> Okay, so you are also one of the ones that you know exactly what you want to do. So I, yeah. I really envy you. Uh, I, I changed my job so many times already. I don't know what I'm going to do in the next few years. Uh, and Anouk? Yeah, I will... Uh, you can say kidney. I mean, nobody's <laughs> kidney so far. It's the liver as well. I mean, it's also the one that I know the best. And it's the one... Because the metabolism, metabolism happens the most in the liver. It's also the main target for toxicity. And that's what, that what is making it very interesting to study it. And that's mm -hmm. why I, I like it so much. Yeah. No, I understand. I understand. I mean, I, I, I'll i make a point at some point to, to invite someone working on the brain and on the, on the kidney just to make a little bit of a balance. Uh, but no, no, makes sense. Um, Okay, uh, to, to jump a little bit more. Okay, I tried to explain why repeated dose toxicity is, it might be an issue. Uh, so... Okay, we, we know that it's something that is not well covered, maybe in the legislation in terms of alternatives. Uh, and the question that I always have for most of my guests, it's always the reason why we do not have alternatives in this case is an issue of, of science or, or is an issue of regulation or somewhere else. So why we are still lacking some, uh, some alternatives in, in that sense. Uh, maybe I'll start again with Mathieu this time and then we can make the round. Well, actually, this was a discussion we, a lively discussion we had last week during the ESTEF conference. So it seems that we as scientists like to point to the regulators. It's your fault that we don't have alternatives because the validation is way too complicated. But then the regulators tell us, well, we have nothing to validate. So you should first create something to validate. And I think where well, the truth will lie in between somewhere, I would say. What I think we shouldn't forget is that, of course, we do have NAMs already for a couple of acute toxic uh, endpoints like skin irritation, these kind of things. For the longer term, the chronic endpoints, we don't have. And I think that we shouldn't underestimate the, you know, the gaps in knowledge that we still have. And that is important. You first need to go back to basic biology, pathology, and this is exactly what we do in OMTOX. 
because then if you understand the mechanisms, you will be able to, you know, generate uh, assays that pick up key events in those mechanisms. And I think this is one of the main reasons is because we do still lack, you know, quite some knowledge. And of course, we also are a bit short in, let's say, well, short is maybe not a good wording, but um, we also have some technical shortcomings still. Uh, but there's so much progress lately. Again, I, I like to refer always to the artificial intelligence and the big data science and so on. So that's, that's uh, also what I see as a main reason. And as an academic researcher, of course, I wouldn't be a good academic researcher if I wouldn't complain about the lack of funding, um, <laughs> which actually is true because, again, you need to do basic research. And I think this is sometimes where the regulators want to see a speed up, they underestimate how, how much time it takes and how, you know, how expensive that is. It comes from both sides, I would say. Yeah, no, I understand. And uh, I mean, I understand that maybe for the others might be a little bit more difficult, uh, the, the specific question. But yeah, it's true that it's, it needs to be a, com a communication, needs to be always a back and forth between the two. And it's great that there are people like you that uh, have these, uh, these really trying on the bench to make it work. Um, I don't know if for the others, do, did you have, maybe during the studies, do you have some, some lesson or some interaction with the regulators, with policymakers uh, previously or, or in your work? It's something that happens in, in your training or, or not? Maybe start with Young because he's the one with a little bit more experience. Uh, like in, in the on top, previously, I think in, for the regulators, uh, we really need some talk because uh, they want to see some concrete and solid evidence that it's working. The new methodology okay. is working. Yeah. So, yes. And it, to me, uh, there are multiple like factors that we still don't have an alternative me method at this moment. Because indeed, uh, compared to the whole animal, the animal model, like a simple in vitro cultures, uh, may not be able to reflect the biology or the whole entire organ or the tissue level, not to mention the organ-organ interactions during the development of the disease. So the technical and uh, like methodological uh, evolution or improvements are still needed at this moment for our like for us as researchers, and but we also need like fundings to validate the things, the in vitro assays, we already have developed recently and to get more concrete evidence that it's working and how to improve it and to collect some information about that, then we can persuade uh, the regulators to uh, like uh, prove or to help us to, to, for its implementation. So it's kind of a group work. So mm -hmm. we need to talk. Yeah, no, I understand, indeed. Well, uh, I, I don't know if Anouk or Jonas, if, if it happens in maybe in your, doing your master, is there some sort of uh, lesson or course on, on some sort of connection with policymakers as well? In my master's as a student. <laughs> I mean, or doing your PhD as well. I, I don't know if it's something that is covered as well doing education. No, in my master's at the at the Kyle Leuven itself, we did never really approach like the regulation side in now in NAMS, but at the VUB there and now in my PhD project it's more and more upcoming. And I'm glad that I'm also now learning that what the mm -hmm. side of the regulatory because in my masters I never encountered that. So in that way I'm I'm really happy that that I come across <laughs> these aspects. <laughs> And I'm assuming that you're all the same thing in Jonas, uh, in your master as well. Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, we got like, uh, it, it was called industry game, which sounds really fancy, but okay. uh, we had to make like a registration report. But it okay. was really uh, a really small part of the, of the task, so to say. What we did learn was about where to place a pharmacy, but uh, no, nothing about uh, how to, how is policy being done and... Mm -hmm how regulation is being done. So that's actually really a pity, I think. Yeah. Well, I, I can also suggest you to look back at the episode we had two weeks ago because I was discussing with uh, an analyst in the European Commission on Policy for Science 
uh, on talks to him and she really was able to try to show the perspective of the two things because you saw the scientists always like but this thing is working use them and they're like yeah it's not that easy uh, and there are always yeah. more angles to, to consider um, but okay no that, that I think it's uh, it, it makes a little bit better uh, sense of indeed how Ontox came to be and, and what you are trying to do um, now I'd like to show you a, a little video that uh, everybody saw apart from Matthew uh, that I did at this lab uh, and, and I went around because I wanted to see a little bit how the people were working there and, and I went to ask to, to the students uh, what was their uh, their work with the lab uh, and uh, what they were thinking about Ontox. Uh, and then we see, Mathieu, what do you think of their answers? So we launch the video and we, we see each other back in, in five to, to six minutes. The Talks presents Tatabox, the first ever game about new approach methodologies. You want to be part of the journey towards alternatives to animal research and test? Change is one game away. Come and embody a scientist on his path to develop a new NAM. Tile by tile, step by step, play your way towards validating your method. Save animals while creating your path. And understand the steps and endeavors needed for validation and dissemination. Play, learn, raise awareness, discuss, teach, support. May the fun be with NAMS. Today we pay a visit to Matthew's Minkas lab and we're going to ask a few of the students to show us around and tell us what they're working on. Let's go! It was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. <laughs> Uh, so I'm actually developing uh, an in vitro test battery for chemical induced cholestasis. So here I'm focusing uh, on chemical induced steatosis and we are trying to make an in vitro test battery that has a series of in vitro assays that can detect specific key events that are associated with uh, steatosis and these key events are actually covered by an AOP network. Uh, actually, we're in, uh, I'm involved in both the deplastetic and steatotic liver injury induced by chemicals. We are developing in vitro assays that covering this full spectrum of key events during the disease development. So here we have the RNA DNA lab. Yes. And uh, where the PCR machines are. We have like uh, yeah, six NUMs, uh, I suppose. So we have uh, three... Uh, uh, target organs, so to say, uh, the brains, the kidneys, and the liver. And we actually uh, yeah, aim to get like uh, in vitro test batteries for the liver. Uh, in Ontox, uh, D6 NEMS, uh, we want to have a lot of data to create like the ontologies. And uh, there are certainly gonna be gaps in the, well, in the data to be found. Uh, and we are there a bit to like, uh, Fill in the gaps with uh, in vitro testing. The storage room for the for the freezers. And also, uh... Minus. Yeah. So for Ontox, uh, it's and they creating new approach methodologies that are and for a part linked to artificial intelligence, and to learn the machine they need a lot of data, and we are uh, giving them the mechanistic data associated to 
the liver now. For me, it's steatosis. So the data I generate with my in vitro test battery, they will use to predict uh, toxicity. On tox is going to use a two-tiered strategy to dis develop those in vitro assays. The first tier is going to be uh, like to identify the transcriptomic signatures for each disease we're studying. And the second tier is to adding other, adding informations from other biological layers on top of those translational uh, transcriptional uh, signatures, and then to like complement and to make the, uh, the assays like cover the whole, like multiple like layers and then of the biology. And then we're gonna have a very precise and accurate prediction of the chemical toxicity. Oh, okay. And then First indeed one. the light comes through here and here is then the lens. Yeah, I think it's uh, really cool that you like connect different, uh, yeah, how do you say, groups, groups of people, also really different people, different backgrounds. Uh, I think Ontox is cool because uh, I think it will have a big impact for the, for the future in the toxicity testing since now a lot of in vivo models are used for, uh, for repeated dose toxicity and it's nice to now go to more in vitro or like other new approach methodologies. Yeah, first of all, I think Ontox is pretty cool. Uh, it's kind of uh, the, I would say the present and also the future. So Ontox, I will say, is an interdisciplinary like project uh, it consists different aspects uh, such as in vitro and silico, artificial intelligence, and maybe in the future like uh, precision medicine, like personalized treatment or like target. So it sounds very, it's pretty cool. It's avant-garde for me. Wow. I, I hope you like the answers. Yeah, I, I must say I'm impressed. You know, Ontox is, is in first and, and foremost, I would say, is about developing NAMS. But Ontox and also the other two projects is also developing or creating and, you know, training the next generation of researchers that will use those NAMS. And I think Jiang, Anouk and Anjonas are very good examples of this. It makes me very proud also, especially because Anouk and Jonas, for example, they are PhD level. Of course, Jiang also, but she already has some experience. But to see the three of them, how independent they already are after, you know, these 18 months or even sometimes in, in some cases one year. Um, and how cool they actually, uh, <laughs> they uh, also presented during this interview. So it makes me really proud. And this is for me also what Ontox is all about. So it's not only about the NAMS, but also, which I think is a main responsibility for me, is also to train and to help to shape the career of researchers. So very nice, Don. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I have to tell indeed you did a really great job. Honestly, I don't know if I would have been able, after one or three years of my PhD, to say in one sentence what I was doing. Uh, so it, it was impressive. I hope, I hope you liked it. Did you enjoy the video? Did you like it? Yeah, I like it very much, actually. Good. Uh, you cannot skills. say no. You are live and you're in front of me right now. But yeah, <laughs> you can tell me later in private if you want. Uh, no, thank you very much for, for, for taking the time and helping me to do this. I would I, I would applaud you if I was in, in person. Um, I, I actually also wanted to, to, to make you uh, aware that there was a little battle again on, on the audience. Other people are saying that, of course, there are other systems that are important when it comes to toxicology. The hematopoietic system, for example, is heavily impacted when it comes to toxicity, uh, reproduction as well. Uh, but, you know, I guess you have to make uh, uh, choices when you when you create a project. You know, you cannot work on everything. You have to decide, okay, you're going to put my, my resources uh, somewhere. Um, um, if, if I may respond to this, uh, actually, it, it shouldn't be forgotten that it's a five, five years project. So, of course, we would like to replace all of the animal testing for systemic repeated dose toxicity. But what we wanted to do is to, you know, provide some proof of concepts like, look, this is a strategy that we proposed and it will work. So we had to delineate. And that's why we focused on the kidney, the liver and the developing brain, because these are among the most frequently targeted organs in systemic repeated dose toxicity testing. But of course, and I refer back to when I mentioned the legacy, the idea would be that in follow up projects, we apply exactly the same 
to other types of organs and toxicity. So it's absolutely not finished here. Yeah, no, no, you, 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 you are right. Indeed, it's it's building on top of something that was coming before and creating the the road for for the future. Indeed, um, and I also like that. Indeed, probably the take home message for the entire episode would be like, <laughs> "Antox is cool. It is, it is cool. I think it is cool indeed." Um, and maybe I have the same. I mean, okay, you. I think you replied already, kind of it, but uh, more specifically, Matteo, for you, since I asked already to the others in the video. What would be the most important part for you in Ontox? If you really have to pick one thing among the many important things of the project, which one would it be? Well, I need to be very careful here because I need to give a diplomatic answer. So, of course, I have my personal preferences. Uh, but in one word, impact. That's basically it. Um, so, and that comes along with doing good science, with having you know the right people aboard. And if you have the right elements here, the good recipe, so to say, so the magic that will come out is impact. And I really hope that we as a team, as a consortium, but also me as a person can actually contribute to that impact. So that really something will change because what we are doing here uh, so that we can save lives of animals, that we can do better science, that we can have more safe, safer chemicals. And that in the longer term, hopefully not so long term, that this will actually contribute also to a legislative change. That really would be, you know, for me, the most important achievement, the impact. Yeah, to have indeed a, con a concrete uh, impact on the society. <clears throat> yeah. And maybe more related to, to, to the others, to Anouk and Yona specifically, maybe more, because that's, I mean, it's your first experience indeed uh, in, uh, in, in the lab as a PhD student and a I know you don't have anything else to compare it, maybe, but how how was for you? How it is for you in working on a project like this one? I mean, do you feel? What do you feel? What is the the, the thing that is uh, that is most that works the best for you, or the challenges that you have working in such a massive project as your first PhD project? Uh, and I'm gonna start with Anouk, just because you just moved your you just uh, unmuted yourself. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel actually very excited to be part of such a project because. As Matthew says, I, I also hope that it has an impact and as it doesn't that it doesn't just stop after five years. And for me, it's nice to meet so much uh, people from from different disciplines and we can work together to create something beautiful. And I'm really, really glad that I can be a part of it. So I learn a lot. We discuss a lot. So you get different perspectives of everyone and you can implement it in your own research. It, that is really nice. Yeah. Yeah. And Jonas? Yeah, I think we got a bit like uh, thrown into the project, like, uh, but I don't think that's a bad idea, a bad thing. I, uh, yeah, you, you get to know a lot of people, really a lot of people. You work together with all different kinds of work packages, but uh, yeah, I really like that to uh, like connect with people, uh, to everyone has this purpose in the team. And sometimes it's uh, it's a lot of work, but you know why you're doing it for it's like uh, to get to the end point of the Antox project and everyone is so motivated and I really like that here so yeah yeah no it, it is nice to 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 indeed seeing all these yeah. pieces of, of the puzzle coming together and and feeling that you're part of this huge mechanism indeed and Yang maybe maybe for you it, it would be interesting in your side because you're kind of in between you did or of course work already on different projects before uh, I, you, did you work already on something so structured and so big or, or this is the first time? That's no. actually okay. the first time I joined the group as big as this, as okay. on top. It, it's really, ex I'm so excited, honestly. So actually for me, on top means communication. That's the key word I want to say because uh, on top, it's definitely interdisciplinary. It really consists experts from different, completely different fields. So honestly, they all speak their own languages. So mm -hmm. how to communicate, how to understand each other is the other most uh, important thing. So communication is extremely important. I I really enjoy this like uh, this experience and to discuss and <clears throat> I'm sorry. Uh, and solving problems all together and uh, like all those like get things done th this kind of attitudes 
and I enjoy the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Okay, no, great. I, I, I understand. It did seem that, that you were having fun doing the video as well. So uh, <laughs> that's clear the case. Um, uh, unfortunately, we are clear to towards the end. So I have just one more question for all of you. Uh, which we started to apply already a little bit, but it's nice if we have a few minutes to elaborate more, uh, which is, okay, what, what's going to happen next? I know it's just the, the, the beginning, kind of the middle of the project, but what is going to happen after? What is Ontox going to build towards? And what is the optimal end point, let's say, here? Uh, and again, I'm going to start with Mathieu, and then we'll make the final round. Well, of course, uh, it depends how you see the end and the follow-up. So let's first start maybe with Ontox itself. So we started off uh, in May 21, so we end in April uh, 26, so we still have uh, three and a half years. So we do have a very clear work plan, of course, uh, which for those who are interested can be found also on the Ontox website. So we now came up with these maps of the mechanisms underlying the six case studies that we want to address. So the next step is to set up in vitro test batteries. So that pick up key events in these uh, mechanisms. We are not always at the same pace for the six case studies. For example, the brain work is already a couple of steps ahead, uh, while for the kidney and the liver, we still need, need to get started. But in the end, we are supposed to end up at the same endpoint, so to say. So what we want to do is to first show that it works with chemicals of which we know very well that they are toxic. But near the end, and this is why we also collaborate with different stakeholders from industry, we want to test chemicals for which we don't know what they actually will do. And this is really what we call the app initial kind of case that is really showing that, look, what we have here, it actually works. It can give you a reliable prediction of what we have. Again, and I cannot emphasize this enough, for a number of practical restrictions and reasons, we focus on the liver, the kidney and the brain, but that's absolutely not the limitation. So to give an answer to your question, what comes after? Well, exactly what we want to do, but applied to other types of toxicity, other types of, uh, uh, of organs, basically. What we also want to do is to further elaborate our collaboration with the other two projects, because they also have a very, very nice approach that turns out to be quite complementary to what we are doing. So for me, as you rightly said, Matteo, this is only the starting point. It's a very nice starting point because I think we have all the very important key players aboard in this cluster. Um, but let's see what comes out. It's science, of course. We shouldn't forget about that. We might have expectations and hopes of something that it might work, but obviously things will go wrong. So we will have to invest also some time in things that go wrong and try to you know, put ourselves on the right track again. And that's what I like. It's science. You have the space and the rooms for doing research, um, but it has a clear goal. And you immediately see the impact of that because you interact with the legislators and also with the industry. So this is my vision on, on how I see the endpoints and the follow-up of that. Yeah, it's it's very exciting to think of indeed what this project could, could bring and what indeed you are all trying to, to achieve. Um, and this time maybe going the other way around, starting with Young. What, also from your personal point of view, I mean, what's going to be the future? I mean, okay, now you're working on Ontox. Uh, but where you would like to go as well after? I think I would love to like picture, uh, imagine a picture after uh, on talks, maybe in the future, near future, five or 10 years. I think in that world, the, the, the toxicology will become more in, in silico, artificial intelligence, in vitro, those kind of things, and also personalized. So mm -hmm. after this proof of concept project on talks, we're going to have more evidence to show that this num uh, is working so we're going to combine and apply this uh, methodology to other kind of studies yeah no well said indeed it is it is a, a wonderful future the one that you have uh, that we have ahead hopefully uh anuk yeah what i really what i hope and what i think will also happen is that that this project and the other Two projects is our good starting point that we can really move forward from the whole based animal testing to more like the, the NAMs and like increase the productivity that in human risk assessment and that we can be like a, a very good example and 
cool for further other adverse outcomes. And yeah, I'm excited to be part of this and I hope that I can proceed in this in this field. That's what I hope. <laughs> yeah, well, we, we wish you good luck indeed. <laughs> <In that. laughs> and finally, Jonas. Yeah, I can only agree with uh, the rest just said. Uh, I think it sounds wonderful and also for the future. Uh, yeah, I only see this being applied to more NAMs. Why only six? I Now it's six, but yeah, it's, it's a starting point. Why don't take 100 NAMs uh, for the future? But also, uh, it's just uh, being, uh, of course, optimistic. But yeah, it's, it's the right way forward. I think so too. And yeah, I think this is a good step uh, in the right direction. Yeah, no, me as well. Uh, and thank you very much for you for what well, for me here tonight, of course, but also in general for the work that you are doing. I mean, it's really great that there are people like you that they really try to 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 keep working on this kind of stuff. I know they are extremely complicated and they are not straightforward. Uh, I don't know how easy it is to to make people understand exactly the complication and the complexity of of what you are trying to achieve uh, and how important it is that we achieve it indeed. Um, uh, Mathieu, you said quickly, but I'm going to put it here. This is the OnTalks website. So if people want to know more about it, you can find it there, especially because there's so much more about it that, of course, we couldn't discuss in just one hour. Uh, there is indeed uh, AOPs, there are artificial intelligence, there are three different organs. It's, it's, it's insane how many things you managed to put together and to jiggle all together in these years. Uh, so please have a check of what these people are doing on the website. Uh, I'll, I'm going to put also on the chat the, the website to the, um, I would say, like the mega cluster of all these EU projects together. So Precision Talks, uh, On Talks, and, uh, and Risk Hunter, which is ASPIS, uh, where you can see also other information about all the different activities that all these projects are doing together because they are really, uh, really cool to, to steal the, the description of all the others before. Uh, and, and with that, I would say that's it. Uh, I thank you. Thank you very, very much for your participation. And, and I hope to see you uh, in the near future in another occasion. Thank you so much, Matteo. Yes. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yeah. My pleasure. Thank you, Matteo. Thank you, Bye. Uh, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs> Goodbye. And with you, that's the end of this episode. Uh, I thank you very much for remaining till the end with us. I hope you had fun. Uh, I hope you learned something. And uh, we come back in two weeks. We are going to focus on the other EU project. This time we are going to focus on Precision Talks. It's going to be the 14th of December, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so keep an eye on our LinkedIn account, uh, YouTube and Twitch uh, and Twitter as well, because we are going to publish the, the event soon. And uh, with that, I, I, I think we are done. So see you soon. Ciao, ciao.